hypertension is a broad umbrella term that refers to an elevated mean pulmonary artery pressure that can develop from a variety of causes. We define pH as a mean pH pressure greater than 20 millimeters of mercury. And this definition was actually recently changed at the Sixth World Symposium on Pulmonary Hypertension. Previously, pH had been defined as a mean pH pressure greater than or equal to 25, but since we now know that a mean pH pressure greater than 20 millimeters of mercury is abnormal, we have changed the definition of pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary arterial hypertension is a subgroup of pulmonary hypertension that's characterized by an elevated mean pulmonary artery pressure, an elevated pulmonary vascular resistance greater than or equal to three wood units, and a normal wedge pressure less than or equal to 15 millimeters of mercury. In addition to this hemodynamic criteria for PAH, patients with PAH are categorized as group one pulmonary hypertension. This means that they have pulmonary hypertension that is idiopathic, heritable, associated with drug and toxin use, or associated with certain conditions such as connective tissue disease, portal hypertension, congenital heart disease, or other conditions. Patients with PH and PAH are actually a heterogeneous group of individuals. So is there, there's not one typical patient profile that fits all patients with pulmonary hypertension. We do know, however, that there are consistent risk factors, such as female sex, that is associated with an increased risk of pulmonary hypertension. Women are about two times more likely to develop pulmonary hypertension than males. Additionally, in the past, we thought that PAH typically just affected young individuals, and particularly young females. We now know from more recent United States and European registries of pulmonary hypertension, however, that PAH is affecting more and more older individuals in addition to younger individuals. So there are five different World Health Organization groups that classify patients with pulmonary hypertension. We divide patients into these five groups because there's different etiologies as well as treatment approaches for different types of pulmonary hypertension. Patients with group one pulmonary arterial hypertension have uh, either idiopathic, heritable, or drug and toxin induced pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH associated with certain conditions like connective tissue disease, congenital heart disease, or portal hypertension. Group two pulmonary hypertension refers to pulmonary hypertension associated with left heart disease, which is typically heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, or patients with valvular heart disease. Patients with group 2 pH typically have an elevated pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and post-capillary pulmonary hypertension as opposed to pre-capillary pulmonary hypertension, which characterizes group 1 PAH. Patients with group 3 pulmonary hypertension have pulmonary hypertension associated with chronic lung diseases and chronic hypoxia, and this can develop in the setting of obstructive or restrictive lung disease or combined obstructive and restrictive lung disease. Group four pulmonary hypertension refers to chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension, which develops due to chronic PE and organized fibrous thrombi that develop within the pulmonary blood vessels that leads to pulmonary hypertension and right heart failure. Group five refers to pulmonary hypertension with multifactorial or unknown mechanisms of action. And this includes pulmonary hypertension uh, related to conditions such as sarcoidosis, chronic renal failure, or myeloproliferative disorders. In terms of functional class, we use functional class to describe a patient's physical limitations related to pulmonary hypertension. For example, patients with functional class one symptoms have really no limitation in their physical activity related to PAH, whereas patients with functional class two symptoms have slight limitation, patients with functional class three symptoms have more marked limitation, and patients with functional class four symptoms have such limitation in their physical activity that they're unable to do physical activity without any symptoms. Patients with functional class four symptoms of pulmonary hypertension often also have signs of right heart failure, like lower extremity edema, they may have exertional syncope as well, and they, have, they can have symptoms at rest. We use functional class to both stratify the risk related to pulmonary hypertension and to determine treatment approaches.